another Player YouTube car review. And today we've got the Arteon, which is from Volkswagen. And it's a brand new model from Volkswagen. It's hopefully gonna push the Passat out of the distance because not one of my favorite cars. This car, however, the R-Line, which is the top of the range, comes with four motion. Basically, that means four wheel drive. It's got a two liter bi-turbo diesel engine. They do do a petrol version. Uh, the diesel one, this is developing around 240 brake horsepower. The petrol one develops around about 280. Difference around 40 horsepower if you've done your math there. Um, it's got some lovely bits and pieces about it, especially the R-Line because it is the top of the range. It's got all the extra little bits of body kit on it as well. Comes with a 19 inch alloys, rather nice. Lovely LED running lights. I love the fact the way this bonnet sweeps over the front and you've got this lovely aggressive low grille on it. But we are talking comparisons here and obviously this was designed to compete against the likes of BMW and our other favourite car, the Audi. Um, I said that with tongue in cheek by the way. So let's take a look around the car because there are some lovely bits and pieces. The, the main focus on this car you have to remember is they're in that sort of mid luxury range um, and it's really whether you think it's worth paying the almost £40,000 fee for this type of car as against the others. Let's go check out the back and have a look around. Here in the back of this car is huge. And when I mean huge, check this out. It's so big, you could actually quite a nice sleep in here. I mean, it's just massive, this car. Um, the only thing I did notice when, when I got in, I'm about five foot 10, which is approximately 175 centimeters for the uh, Brexit people. Uh, up here, not a lot of room for the bigger guy. But saying that, I wouldn't really have that many people in the back of my car. There is a good thing in the middle here. It's got a third seat, obviously, and you can get your legs either side of the footwells. Wouldn't want to go too far in this with three people, it'd be quite cramped, but you've got the extra third seat here when you need it. Come round the back because what I'm going to show in a minute is spectacular. So we're round at the back of the Arteon and I love this, the, the old school Arteon sign, it looks really cool. This is a hatchback, but they like to call it a fastback at Volkswagen. Fastback, hatchback, all same to me. It's still got a lovely rear sweeping end to it. Some really lovely curving lights around here. Two massive great exhaust pipes. And here, as you will see when you push the VW button, when you operate the reverse gear, this automatically pops like that and that's where the little reverse camera is. It's quite a good little novel idea. And obviously you can uh, then lift it. I would pay for the option of having the electrified rear boot or hatchback bit because it is quite heavy um, look at that guys I mean that is space that's 463 litres of space in there you could get five suitcases in there easily but I'm going to show you something a little bit more special about this car so we'll cut there and we'll come back in a second as you can see I'm with my tame rugby player JP this boot is so big 1550 litres, allowing two grown men to sleep in comfort together whenever they are out on the road. Thanks JP, I'll go back to bed. <laughs> Get out now. <laughs> this is where we need an outtake. <laughs> Shit. Oh. At least he got out better than me. There you have it. Big enough. We could rent this out. We could actually rent it to a couple of students and get good money for it. Nice one. Well done, VW. Let's go and take a look inside. Up front in the uh, Arteon, it's pretty nice. It's comfortable. We've got this massive nine inch display screen here. However, the, the actual dashboard itself is very, very reminiscent of the Passat. Um, it's 
a little bit bland, I must say, but nevertheless, you know, what more do you really expect from a VW? Got everything here on the steering wheel. We've got the sound adjustment. Uh, I've got the cruise control. There's park lane assist. There's all all sorts of manner of things that they've thrown on here. However, the one thing I'm really dead against, and I think it's an absolute waste of money, they've got a heads-up display here, which is almost like um, oh, it's 500 quid extra. I mean, for 500 quid, you get a decent holiday in Corfu, or well, nowadays anyway. Um, I wouldn't waste your money on it. I can't see it when I'm driving, it's too low, and it really does look like a Halfords accessory. Um, over here, let's just take a look. You do pay extra for the uh, sat-nav system on this as well, which I find remarkable if you're spending you know, that sort of money on a car, 35, 40 grand. It's ridiculous. But nevertheless, it's here. Um, there's an app connect section here as well. You've got all the vehicle, there's tire pressure monitoring system, another 125 quid. The, all these things are adding up, you know, but on a, on a lot of the others, they do include them. And I just feel that this is where it lets itself down. Heated uh, front seats, but on this particular model, you pay again extra and you've got heated rear seats as well. Um, you've got all your controls here for your heating, nice and simple. We like that. So individual, joint, however you want to do it. Full auto mode as well. Um, standard seven speed gearbox that comes and paddle shifts as well, which is quite neat because there are three modes on this. Um, it was actually four because the, the, the main normal driving mode, then you've got a sport mode. Um, then there is an individual setup mode as well that you can program in yourself. Um, I'll show you how that works now by pushing the mode button. So you've got your individual, your sport, your normal, and there's a comfort mode as well. Um, I want to show you a little cheeky gadget that is on here that I found quite nice. When you go into navigation, um, to start with that all comes up and it sort of has this sensor that when you get near it, if you watch now, if I put my hand there, oh, it comes up. But I do worry, I think I prefer some of the other um, models, makes of cars where you've got it on a dial here, it's a lot safer when you're driving. When you're fiddling about here, you tend to have your eye off the road. So, I mean, yeah, all in all, it's great. Couple of cup holders uh, inside here, nice big box with a, you've got your attachments here for um, charging and things like that. And yeah, to be honest, it's quite well made. It's a comfortable seat. I can't really fault it. It's, it's a good car. Let's get it out on the road um, and just give you a quick feedback on how it all feels. Out on the road, this car, is the first thing you notice is how quiet it is. It's really, really good. Um, there's a couple of useful things. The lane assist on this is pretty incredible. We just tested it. Um, I'm not actually going to do it on camera, but it, it's pretty amazing where the car itself you know those occasions when you're feeling a little bit sleepy, you've been on a long drive, maybe you've had a hard day, and you just drop off for a couple of seconds. I mean, the, the accidents that that has caused over the years are immeasurable, and it really shouldn't happen anymore. And this car has a fantastic um, sensor that picks up when that is happening. Uh, like I say, I'm not going to show you on here, but basically what it did, it took over the driving for me and kept me within the lane, which was amazing. And after a couple of seconds, if you don't react with the steering wheel, it takes over from you. And at that point, it will slow the car down, put the hazard warning lights on and bring you to a stop and then call the emergency services, which, I think, you know, you can't get better than that. It's as safe as houses, this car. Um, when I was showing you earlier on the modes as well, if you go back to the screen here, I'll just show you there was a, another mode here, the eco mode. And in the eco mode, we are averaging around 48 miles to the gallon on a two litre twin turbo diesel engine. It's pretty good. Um, the petrol one gets slightly more, uh, slightly less, sorry, um, <laughs> as if you would with a diesel. Uh, but all in all, this car is a really comfortable, nice car to drive. One more little fault that I did find with it, shy of 40 grand, you'd expect to have electric seats, at least on the, the driver's side. <clears throat> this doesn't. Um, it does have a little backwards and forwards, but the actual main section on the seat when I went to put it back is manual. Uh, come on VW, that's a lot of money. I expect a full, you know, moving seat with a massage button on it or something, or at least the two front seats. Um, fantastic car, I've loved driving it. It's smooth, in the sport mode, it's 
very powerful. It's got tons and tons of torque there. And I just think it's one of those situations you have to weigh up the competition. Where have VW positioned this in the market? And it's very difficult to, to actually ascertain that. But hopefully, the, you know, the Arteon's going to be here for the next few years and they're going to improve it and come out with uh, better little bits and pieces for it. Because I do think it, it has a good place in the market. Um, thanks for watching. If you like watching what we're doing, and I'm getting them shorter and shorter as, as much as I can because I've got so much to pack in, um, push the little like button down the bottom. That really helps me. And if you do want to see more and you enjoy watching, then just subscribe and then you'll get regular updates. Um, apart from that, thanks for watching, guys, and I look forward to the next car that we're doing, which is something rather special. I'm not going to spoil it. Wait and see.